In space language, 2015 began with three letters, IXV. During its short two-hour flight in February, Europe's intermediate experimental vehicle validated critical re-entry technologies and proved Europe's ability to guide its own vehicles back to Earth safely. Galileo, Europe's own global navigation satellite system, has also gathered pace in 2015. In March, two new Galileo satellites were sent to space, and another four would follow up to the end of the year. What a present to mark the 10-year anniversary of the launch of the first Galileo satellite, GOVA. Today, with 14 satellites up and running, Galileo is a reality with more than one-third of the constellation in space and a fully deployed ground network. Also rapidly developing is ESA's Earth Observation Program. With the launch of Sentinel-2 in June and Sentinel-3 joining in 2016, Europe has never been so well equipped to survey changes in our land, oceans and atmosphere. The data sent by these satellites is crucial to monitor climate change, and it provided world leaders attending the COP21 in Paris with the evidence they needed to crunch a new deal to keep global warming below the 2 degrees Celsius. And as the last weather satellite in Europe's Meteosat second-generation series lifted off on the 15th of July from Europe's spaceport in Kourou, Europe guaranteed the continuation of high-quality weather observations from space. 2015 has also been a busy time for European astronauts. After 200 days on the Futura mission, Samantha Cristoforetti's time in space was over on the 11th of June. But then it was the turn of Andreas Mogensen. After a 10-day mission to the International Space Station in September, Andreas added Denmark to the list of European space explorers. In December, it was time for Tim Peake to make history, as he became the first British citizen to live and work on the space station. There's Tim Peake, British. In the eighth long-duration mission for an ESA astronaut, Tim's Principia mission will advance microgravity research. Rosetta, ESA's Comet Chaser mission, had another moment of glory on the 13th of August, when observing Comet 67P drew me off Gerasimenko at Perihelion, its closest approach to the Sun. Returning these dramatic pictures of parts of the comet outgassing. One year after the Philae landing, Rosetta's voyage continues to fascinate us with new insights on the comet's surface and atmosphere helping us to better understand the origin of our solar system. And from Rosetta to another pioneering mission, LISA Pathfinder. Top. Allumage et décollage. Launched by a Vega rocket from Kourou in early December, this new mission is set to transform the way in which we observe the universe. So far, our knowledge has been based upon the observation of electromagnetic waves, such as visible light or X-rays. But what LISA is looking for are gravitational waves. Predicted by Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, these ripples in the fabric of space-time will allow scientists to address some of the most fundamental questions about the universe and raise new ones.